Welcome to the One Password Team Members Get Started webinar. So as most of you probably already know, One Password is a password manager that keeps you, your business information, and all your colleagues safe online. You want to use different passwords for every website, but it can be hard to keep track of them all. One Password will generate, save, and fill your passwords for you. One Password is available for all your devices, Mac, iOS, Windows, and Android, and in all your browsers, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, and more. So you'll always have all your information with you. Any changes you make on one device are immediately available everywhere else. You can securely share information with other people in your company, and you'll even be alerted when there are password breaches on sites you have saved in 1Password. So in this presentation, we're going to show you how to use onepassword.com to view and edit your passwords and other important information, how to set up the OnePassword apps, and how to save, fill, and change your passwords to make them more secure. So when I first sign into onepassword.com, I'll see all the vaults I have access to. These vaults are containers that hold collections of information I need to keep secure. They help organize items and allow me to share data with others. Everyone in the company gets a vault called private. It's where you'll store all your work-related passwords and other items. If you leave the company, you lose access to that vault. So it's not a good place to store your personal data. Now on the left, you'll see some examples of all the different things you can store in one password. Logins for signing into different sites. So those will contain your usernames, passwords, and then the website where you use them. You've got secure notes to keep track of things like gift lists, alarm and door codes, anything you need to remember and want to store securely. If you have a corporate credit card, you can save it here too. If you lose your card, you won't have the phone number to call and report it lost. But if you save it in 1Password, you'll not just have the phone number, you can even place the call right from 1Password. You can even store documents like PDF receipts and other confidential files. So there's a whole host of things that you can store in 1Password and uh, won't go through each and every one of them, but I hope that gives you some idea of the kinds of things that you can store in 1Password. Now there's also a shared vault that everyone on your team has access to. And it's a place where anything you add is immediately shared with everyone on the team. So for example, here we have a server status pages uh, secure note. And it's just got a bunch of links to status pages for the different sites that we use, different services. And we also use uh, Twitter to provide support. And let's just go ahead and add that here, the status page for Twitter. And after we add that, everyone on the team will have access to that link so they don't have to go hunt it down and they can open it with a click. Now, if I have access to any other vaults, I'll see them on my home screen as well. These vaults are shared with specific people in the company. So we have access to the data we need to do our jobs. So here you'll see things like marketing, social media, system operations, Toronto office. So you can tell that you can organize them uh, in different ways. So social media is a distributed team. Toronto office is a bunch of people, you know, in a specific geographic location. So just whatever makes sense for your team, you can create vaults and organize your information in that way. Now, if I need to share an item with my team, I just need to open the item and choose which vault to move it to. So here in my private vault, I've got this uh, Instagram account and let's go ahead and move that to the social media vault. And so I just click move next to social media. And now I can switch into the social media vault by clicking that vault switcher at the top. And there's the Instagram account that everyone on the social media team now has access to. So you've seen what it's like to use onepassword.com, but for the best experience, you'll want to set up the OnePassword apps. So I'm going to click my name up in the top right here, or I should say <laughs> Wendy's name. This is our demo account. <laughs> click your own name in the top right. Click get the apps. And then the first step, of course, is to download the app for whatever platform you're using, Mac, Windows, iOS, Android. And we have 1Password X there for uh, Chromebooks and Linux. Now in this case, we've already downloaded 1Password for Mac ahead of time. 
So all you need to do is click add your account directly. There's that setup code on the left there that if you need to uh, sign in on a mobile device, you just point your camera at that and it'll enter in all this similar information on your mobile device. Then all you need to do is enter your master password and you're signed right in. We'll just step through the initial setup there. And now what you're gonna see here is gonna be a little bit familiar. It's got the same categories in the sidebar on the left that you saw in onepassword.com, your logins, credit cards, secure notes. Uh, you've also got some tags. And let's see, so one of the things that the apps uh, make a lot easier is adding documents. So you can actually just drag and drop that. We've got a receipt here on the desktop. Then we just drag over to the item list and that's gonna add that right into my vault. And in order to make it easier to find this later, let's go ahead and add a tag to that. So if we edit the item, and we'll give it the uh, finance tag. And now if you look over in the sidebar, that finance tag has this receipt and a couple other items, including my corporate card. So I can find that whenever I need to do my um, expense reports later on. And just like we were able to move items on onepassword.com, you can also move items really easily in the app. In fact, it might even be a little bit easier. Um, so if we go to my secure notes here, I've got a grocery list and really this is for the Toronto office. So let's go ahead and move that to the Toronto office vault. And you can do that with just a simple drag and drop. So move that over to the Toronto office in the sidebar. And now everyone in the Toronto office can see my grocery list for the office and buy me the stuff that I want. Now, of course, the real magic happens when you start using 1Password to save and fill passwords. You can even have it generate strong passwords to increase the security of your accounts. If you're using Safari on a Mac, the 1Password extension is already installed. If you're using any other browser on any other platform, it's simple to install the 1Password extension. You just choose 1Password from the menu bar and select Install Browser Extensions. And then from there, you just click the one to install and you're good to go. Now with the 1Password extension installed, all you need to do is double click a login item to sign in. So here we'll double click Amazon and it opens the Amazon page, fills in my username and password, and I'm signed right in. Now, before we go too far with Amazon, we're gonna need to add an address and a payment method. 1Password makes that easy too. So when we go to add an address, we just click the 1Password button in our toolbar up at the top, and we click the work identity, fill that in, and that just fills in my address. And then we just add a payment method, and it's the same thing. Click the 1Password button in the toolbar, choose the credit card to fill, fills it right in, and now we can start buying those groceries from that list for the Toronto office. So those items that we filled were saved ahead of time. But what about accounts that you haven't already saved in 1Password yet? So I'll show you how to use 1Password uh, to save details as you go along. I just signed into sites like I used to before I used 1Password by entering my username and password manually. So here I'll sign into the 1Password forum. And when I do, 1Password detects the change and offers to save it. And I can give it whatever custom title I want. I can choose a different vault, add a tag, and then just click Save Login. Now this is a great opportunity for me to make the password stronger. Something so strong, I won't be able to remember or type it. Thankfully, 1Password does both of those things for me. Now where it asks for the old password here, I can actually copy that from where we just saved it a second ago. So it saves me a little bit of typing there. And then I go up to the one password button in the toolbar, click password generator. And if there's any requirements for length, 
the number of digits or symbols. It's easy to adjust those. Uh, let's see this. Yeah, that looks good. Now one password detects the change and I just click update existing and I'm good to go. Now my one password support form password is secure. But I might have some other passwords that need to be changed. So let's take a look at the Watchtower feature in the main app. Watchtower shows you all your passwords and other items that can be improved. So one of the first things there is compromised logins. And these are sites that have experienced uh, data breaches or other incidents that we uh, constantly monitor and they'll alert you. So in this example here for our Twitter account, Twitter had some kind of issue not too long ago and we haven't changed our password for this account since that happened. So now is the time to change that password. Directly underneath that in the sidebar, we have vulnerable passwords. And this actually integrates directly with haveibeenpwned.com, which is a database of passwords that have been exposed in breaches. So in this case, these passwords, uh, they weren't necessarily compromised on the specific uh, website where I'm using them, but the passwords appear in these databases of known passwords. So it's uh, either a very weak password or the one that has been otherwise leaked online. And so even if it wasn't my account that was leaked, uh, it's a password that should be changed and make sure that we don't use that one. Now, of course, we've got uh, the, everybody's favorite security advice to ignore, reused passwords. And in this case, we're using the same password for uh, Wendy's account on the blog as uh, our Quora account. So that's one that we want to get changed right away. Make sure they're using unique passwords. And then we've got weak passwords, which uh, you know should be pretty self-explanatory and unsecured websites. So ones that are using HTTP instead of HTTPS. Uh, so they're not over a secure connection. Most of the time you can fix that with a single click. One password will take care of that for you and just add the S to the URL. And then we've got a whole host of sites where we haven't turned on two-factor authentication. So this is something that um, you can make sure to turn on for all your, your different sites that support it. And uh, then we also have expiring items, including passports and credit cards, just to let you know that they're gonna expire. And I think the passports will let you know about six months in advance. So that uh, comes in handy. So that's how easy it is to get started with 1Password.